morning students, uh, welcome to the first lecture of the uh, decision support system course uh, for uh, practitioners and researchers alike. As you might have read in the introduction slide, uh, this course is meant for um, both management practitioners as well as students who are pursuing their career in management in specifically to the academic side. So, we will look both the applied side of it and a little bit of the academic side of it. So, it will be a mixed flavor course. So, today is the beginning lecture and we will try to get into this decision support system and why this decision support system is an important tool for uh, this management decision making. So, uh, if you see the slides, um, the title of today's presentation is introduction to decision support systems and uh, my name is Dr. Deepa Philip, I am from IIT Kanpur. So, today's uh, agenda uh, mostly we are going to talk briefly about these concepts. We will enhance these concepts in the later presentations. The first concept we talk about the DSS concept, what is DSS and what does it entails to. Then we talk about slight history of DSS, uh, how it actually progressed, how did it actually spend over time. So, this is the time historic progression is what we will be talking in this one. Then acceptance of DSS that a both industry and academia. Okay. We will be talking about the acceptances of the DSS in both areas. Then we talk about the uses of DSS. So, what, where and how the DSS is used. That are the major aspects we will be discussing on this. And then the last will be the introduction to. So, we introduce major components. Okay. What are the major components of DSS is what we will be discussing. And then once this, we will move to the next one. So, without delaying further, let us talk about the basics of DSS. As I said earlier, you like, you know, why is DSS important and what does you know and how does this has come around. So, the DSS concept there are so many people. So, one of the question is who started this concept, okay. who was the person behind this concept. There are many debates on this, but widely accepted widely accepted name is Michael Scott Morgan, Michael Scott Morton in 1970s. Okay. He was the one who actually proposed this concept okay, or who created this concept and the initial form, okay, the initial form it was known as management decision system. Okay. It was not called as decision support system, it was more meant called as management decision system. The aim was it was facilitate top management to take complicated business decisions. Okay. So, this was the reason the aim or the initial incarnation the first version of it actually focused on the top management to make complicated business decisions. So, hence the name was management decision system. Okay. Then later it became what we call as the decision support system. Okay. Then later what happened was the people said that okay, this is as the computers improved. So, then in between what happened was computers started evolving faster. Okay. In 70s, we were talking about mainframes. Okay. So, later down the road in 80s and 90s, okay, we moved to what you call as personal computers okay, or powerful desktops. So, as the computer system started evolving faster and more and more computational power was available, this management decision system was characterized or you know told to us as 
an interactive computer based system okay a computer based system that you can interact with okay so why do you want to make it as an interactive computer system okay why the system has to be interactive this is the fundamental question at this the main reason why it has to be interactive is to to help the decision makers okay okay and how do or how does the help happens okay how do we do the help okay by utilizing data and models okay okay and to achieve what okay so by utilizing data and models we need to help the decision makers to achieve what what are you trying to achieve okay so the main aim is to solve unstructured business problems okay so this word is very important this unstructured business problem is a very important aspect in this one before we get into this let's talk about the two type of uh, problems okay so we talk here about us in the slide we'll just talk about uh, decision problems okay as i said earlier we can broadly classify the decision problems into two okay going to divide it into two one is called as a structured decision problems and the another is the unstructured decision problem okay so one is structured another is unstructured so what is a structured decision problem as these are the main characteristics of this number one it is well defined the structured decision problem is very well defined and second thing is it has complete data okay total data is available with you in this for this particular case okay and the most important thing is we know how to measure the efficiency of the decision in this particular case we are talking about the three aspects of the structured decision making it's well defined it has complete data and we know how to measure the efficiency of the decision and most of the time this is we see is we call it as also textbook problems okay this structured decision problems are usually available in textbook and very rarely available in real life in the unstructured decision problems or unstructured decisions we talk about it is the number one the feature is you okay need to apply rationality okay we will talk about what is rationality and rational decisions later down the road and number two the second one is previous experience you also need to have some previous experience or a priori experience okay and there are other aspects to this and the third most important part is there is no single decision so we need to do alternate analysis okay we need to look into different alternatives and we need to find out which one of this alternative is really effective and efficient in this regard okay so most of the time the unstructured business problems utilizes this utilizes the experience okay the other name for experience is a priori knowledge the experience or the a priori knowledge of the decision maker okay of the decision maker okay that is the one that you do and once the alternates are analyzed by the decision maker then you basically choose okay then way to 
to choose the best alternative from a set of options you have a set of options and from which you select the best alternative whatever be the best one that you think you can that is the best alternative is the one that you end up choosing as part of this okay so the idea of this one is so when you have to look in different alternatives it will also give you rise to different views of the decision support system based on the background so the decision makers decision makers background should also be factored in okay which means if the person is technically sound or non technically sound you know that kind of things can the person be comfortable with a computing system etc that's all part of the decision making at this point okay so now when we look into the next part of so i hope you guys understand the basics of the dss and how this was created and how michael scott morgan in 70s started this with the management decision system and was more intended towards a top management and uh, uh, to facilitate complicated decision making process then it people talked about it as an interactive computer based system when the computers evolved from mainframes to pcs in 70s to 90s that part of it then why the system has to be interactive because we talked about the unstructured business problems and the structured and unstructured part of the business problems are clearly showed you how to identify from them and their priori knowledge and as well as the best alternatives and how the ba different background of the decision maker should also be taken into account okay i hope it is clear so we now move into the definition of the dss okay how do we define dss as part of this okay so there are many definitions available okay there is so let's talk about a in this case we are talking about a practical or applied uh definition okay or in other words i am talking about is a working definition okay let us talk about this as a definition that we are going to use in this class okay so the dss are what are dss for me it is number one is it's a computer based system okay let us not discuss what is a computer at this point so it's a computer based systems okay so that's number one number two is it is capable of bringing together information from various sources okay you have information or uh, you can think about it as it can also we can call it as data also when you process data you get information so data then processed okay you can think about it as information okay you obtain information from the data okay so either bringing together data or information from various sources okay either one then the third aspect of it is we will take is facilitate organizations or entities okay or individuals to analyze the information so you facilitate individuals or organizations or entities to analyze the information the analysis word i am going to elaborate a little bit on this word okay it's not just analyze i would basically say you can think about it as collect classify segregate okay then uh, group etc so many things you can do about it it's just analysis is not just taking a numerical value out of it okay you basically you are able to do different in uh, actions using this on this information right then the fourth part the last one is allow for 
the evaluation of assumptions and alternatives okay so when we are talking about it is that the system should also allow for the evaluation of assumptions and alternatives so what is assumption in this regard we call it as for us it is hypothesis or belief okay so what is an example of hypothesis let's take an example a small example of a tire okay automotive tire manufacturer okay okay so this is the example we are talking about see the automotive tire manufacturer now believes that his tire is superior to others okay so the belief is superior tire okay now the superiority can be done in many ways okay it is it can be on mileage so this tire will run for like let's say 1 lakh kilometers or something or it can be on safety it will never get punctured or something or it can be on what do you call as efficiency uh, minimize tire noise and other kind of things or uh, those kind of stuff you can talk about it as grip and stuff like this so there are so many ways you can establish the superiority of the tire okay so in different ways or different measures so these are all measurements or these are all ways to quantify okay so system should allow you in multiple ways to quantify and evaluate all these quantifications okay that's one of the important aspect of that so if any system that allows for all these four things okay you can generally call it as a, it's a computer based system and it's capable of bringing to the information or data from various sources and it facilitate the analysis of information not just calculating a numerical value but you can classify segregate etc and it also allows for evaluating the assumptions and alternatives okay and i showed you what is a hypothesis that kind of stuff right here it's a separate example i shown you this okay so with all of these things put together you can generally say that that's a decision support system so then what does the dss helps you to do okay so the dss helps you to the number one is it helps you to improve it helps you to improve what improve the quality okay and responsiveness of decision making responsiveness of decision making okay okay so you are improving the quality okay so when you say quality okay what is quality in this case is Uh, most of the time people call it as conformance okay to standards is people call it as quality in decision making it is a conformance but it is conforming to expectations okay you make a decision expecting something and if the whatever you expected happened as part of the decision then the you can call it as a quality the decision as good quality and responsiveness is the quickness how quick okay the time that you take to make the decision okay so a lot of the time people says what is the, there is a cost of not making a decision okay which is usually very very high in corporate world okay not making a decision usually happens only in bureaucratic world not necessarily in corporate world right so when a system allows you to improve the quality and the responsiveness of the decision making what does you achieve okay hence what do we achieve if we improve the quality and responsiveness of the decision making it is it allows you to improve the management management of a corporation or i will instead of the corporation i call it as organization okay or an entity or a business and private limited company whatever you want to call it right you are it will allow you to improve or better manage the organization okay so ideally speaking the dss okay 
DSS has evolved from EDP or TPS. Okay. EDP or TPS stands for what you call as transaction processing system. Okay. That is what we call as EDP or TPS. It is a transaction processing system. From there, it went to something called as an MIS. Okay. MIS is management information systems. Okay. So, from TPS transaction processing system, we moved to management information system. From there, it evolved to DSS. Okay. So, how do you talk about this is like there are multiple examples of this. One of the major reasons why this uh, DSS evolution happened is what happens about the data. Okay. The data has become something that is lot of people talk about big data, divergent data, so many data, data, data things comes into picture. For us in the decision support system course, we talk about data coming in two forms, only two forms, all one and all. Form number one, it is too much. Form number two, too little. Okay. Either you have abundance of too much of data, otherwise you have too little of data. And in either case, if you have too much of data, you are overwhelmed by the data, you have no clue what to do with the data and sometimes the abundance of the data just clogs up your decision making. And this is very much, this too much is usually seen in sensory, it results in sensory overload usually. Okay. And in too little, when you have very little of data, uh, so this is what happens is when you see people, uh, pilots or somebody who are flying an aircraft and when all these alarms are beeping, beep, 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 beep kind of things, you kind of see that they go into a sensory overload and then they forget to forget the fact that they have to just fly an aircraft at the some point of time. Then when you are too little, what happens is you make assumptions okay, that you cannot verify or irrelevant assumptions and then make suboptimal decisions as part of it. So, for us the data whether it comes too much or too little, the decision support system is supposed to handle both the scenarios or both the cases okay, with uh, um, equal capabilities in this regard. So, I hope you guys understand how we define or how we loosely define a working definition of the decision support system from this slide and why we use decision support system, what does its intended use pretty much is to improve the quality and responsiveness and why do we need to improve the quality and responsiveness of the decision making to better manage the organization or better do the organization. And then we also said that how DSS evolved originally from the old school transaction processing system to the management information system and from there it has evolved now to what you call as the decision support system. Okay. I hope this is now clear to you guys. Now we move towards the next one which is the first part of the decision support system what we call as electronic data processing EDP or other name for it is transaction uh, processing system. Okay. What we call as TPS. So, at this point this is the we are going to talk about the TPS or electronic data processing. Okay. So, this was the initial form the most primitive incarnation okay, of DSS. You can kind of think about it as the you know father of DSS or the beginning starting point of DSS. Okay. This is or you can think about it as the starting point. Okay. This is from where the uh, DSS evolution started okay. and it was intended, intended to be applied to lower, lower operational level of an organization. Okay. So, this was originally intended to be applied to the lower operational levels of an organization. So, let us take an example of this. Okay. A bank. Okay. Let us take a bank and one of the very lowest level of operation is a teller, bank teller okay. or what you call as you can call it as a cashier or whatever it is. So, you go to the bank, you take a check with you or you take some money with you and let us say you want to go and do a money deposit. So, you have something like 20,000 rupees in cash with you. 
and you want to deposit it. So you go, you give the 20,000 rupees to the bank uh, person. What do they do? They first count the money and then they uh, open up the computer, they press a functional key, a account number comes in, they type your account number, put this much money is deposited, uh, enter that and then the data goes into the system and that's it, right? So the, your transaction of depositing 20,000 rupees, okay, is facilitated by this system, okay. And these kind of things, this type of lower level of operations, okay, require what they fundamentally call as, why do we need to do this? The main aim is to automate paperwork, okay. Instead of you filling paper, they filling paper, signing, sealing, giving it all, all those kind of things. This can minimize paper and human error, okay. In all days in a bank, you had something called as, what you call as a journal and ledger, okay. Uh, so, what they used to do is, any transaction on a day, it got to entered in two registers, it used to put in a ledger, then it would transfer to a journal, etc. And then after, so by the time the bank operations are over by 2 p.m. or 3 p.m., until 6 p.m., you have to reconcile all the paperwork. So now with the help of a computer, you don't need to do anything. All these transactions are all digitally stored. And once you press, with the press of a button, you should be able to find out, you know, what has happened. So, all of these kind of things, this lower level, okay, what we call as the lower level operational needs, okay. Uh, this require, do not require too much of intelligence, okay. These are mostly this also means that routine jobs, okay. These are all routine jobs. So, for facilitating these kind of routine jobs and minimizing paper and human error is when we came up with the electronic data processing and another name for EDP is also known as canned transactions, okay. So, this canned transaction means they are pre-written computer programs, okay. Uh, written, tested and validated uh, computer programs, okay, or application to process a transaction, okay, one transaction. Our intention is one transaction should be completely processed in that regard, okay, that is it, okay. So, there are most of the bank database and other kind of things are classic example of an electronic data processing system. So, what are the main characteristics? How do you distinguish, okay, main characteristics of a EDP? How do you distinguish a transaction processing system or an EDP system? So, the first thing is, the first characteristic that help you to understand this is the operational focus of the data. focus of or on data. You are focusing more on data, okay. So, how do you collect data? Then storage of the data, okay. You focus on how to collect the data or focus on the data storage and processing of the data, okay, and ensure complete data flow. It is a big sentence, but you are focusing on data number one, then storage of this data, okay, proper storage of this data. So, make sure that data is stored properly and processing of the data, okay, so that if there is a numerical value, addition, subtraction, everything else need to be done and ensure that the complete data flow. If you are storing the data in a uh, database, then I make sure that the entire details of the uh, data is saved and stored uh, correctly, okay. 
So, this is the number one characteristics of the EDP. Number two, second one, okay. it intends to do what you call as efficient transaction processing. Okay. So, most of the time we might have seen what you call as functional keys in a computer okay. and uh, this is where you know functional key oriented. So, if you go to some of the banks and ask them I want to deposit money, so they will press one functional key and a window will pop up where only the data that is required to you are required uh, needed for to store uh, or collect information about how what transaction whether you are depositing money, withdrawing money, depositing a check etcetera that is available for you in one format. So, they heavily depend so this that is why scanned because in one press of a button this applic this application of the program av is available to you and you can enter the necessary details and the transaction is available for you so that you can immediately process the transaction. So, the transaction is processed efficiently that is the main part. So, most of the time it is functional key oriented. Then the third one is what we call as it is scheduled and optimized optimized scheduled and optimized computer runs. Okay. So, what we are doing is uh, the uh, the CPU input device storage output device okay, this combination okay, is scheduled and optimized in such a way that the complete transaction is processed properly. Now comes the fourth part, okay, which is the integrate files for related jobs. Okay, so if you have different files on this, so it's like to ensure that complete data flow. To make sure that all the files that are related to the job are integrated at the same time. Okay, so all those things are integrated, and then the last part is fifth one is provide summary report for the management. Okay, so you should be able to give the uh, management. Okay, what is the summary of the transaction? How many uh, for if you talk in a bank, the bank manager might need to know how much money was deposited, how much money was withdrawn, how many 500 rupee notes, how many 1000 rupee notes or uh, we do not have any 1000 rupee notes, how many 2000 rupee notes or whatever it is. Okay. So, that kind of information for the uh, next upper level management can also be provided as uh, part of this electronic data processing. So, I hope you now understand how the, the EDP which is the most primitive form of decision support system. Uh, has uh, uh, evolved uh, or was created which was intended to speed up transaction or candid transaction at the lower operation levels to minimize paper uh, and uh, uh, human error uh, and how that actually became uh, the generally the acceptance improved and people started using more and more and more and more stuff. So, you started collecting more data on the transactions. And when you have more data on the transaction, obviously, then now you want to find out more information out of the data. You want to look into the data and find out more info. And from that data, you want to synthesize more information, okay. which gives rise to the next uh, revision of the decision support system, what we call as the management information system. So, if you look in the slide of the management information system, which we call as MIS, okay, the previously the EDP. The electronic data processing EDP, EDP or TPS, the focus was on data. Okay. Here in the MIS, the focus is on information. Okay. You are focusing on information. So, you are you just focusing on information? You are focusing on information with an emphasis. 
okay you are emphasizing with an emphasis on integration and planning of the information systems function okay so you are emphasizing on integration and planning of the information system function so in this case what actually you are looking at is you may have an mis okay and mis will be dealing with tps1 tps2 tps3 etc so you may have multiple transaction processing systems which will all be providing information to one mis okay so may collect data from multiple tps and derive relevant or valuable or necessary information for the middle level management okay most of the time the mis was originally intended this middle level is a very loosely used term in this regard the people sometimes say mis is meant for the middle level management not necessarily it is an aggregation of everything uh, that is above the tps so the tps is really meant for the transaction processing system is really meant for the lower level the mis is for a one level up above that where multiple transaction processing system data is collected in one go and raised up to the uh, one level which is for the mis is so if we look at what are the main characteristics of mis are okay so the number one the first information is we talked about information focus you are not focusing on data you are focusing on information and hence aimed at middle managers okay okay that's what the one of the way you can think about it right the second main aspect of the mis is structured information flow okay in tps it was structured data flow okay so structured data was flowing in the tps in this case it is structured information what is flowing in this one right so then the third part is we integration integration of edp or tps jobs by business functions okay so when you say business function what do you mean by business function one example is production mis okay another one is marketing mis you can talk about it as personal mis etc so what we are talking here is by different aspects different functions of the business whether it's production marketing finance hr etc you are going by the business functions you are integrating them by the business function okay then the last part the fourth characteristic we talk about is enquiry and report generation okay you are capable of enquiry or putting a question and generate a relevant report as based on it okay usually most of the time usually with a database okay so multiple related relevant data is collected together to create a database as part of this and this database from which you are able to enquire or ask questions and get a relevant report or information out of that database so the intention here is it's a you obtain a new level of information okay 
from the data that is stored to serve management needs. Okay. So, you may want to do something as part of this, but was still built upon information flows in data files. Okay. So, you still uh, using information flow and data available. So, I will give you a small example of it. Right. In a management stuff, as you grow up in the man ladder, so we give this triangle. So, this is the lower level of management, then is the middle and then is the top. Okay. And in this direction, it is the number of people. Okay. You have more people at the lower level and lesser at the middle and very few at the top level. right? So, the lower level is the ones who basically you know do the work. The middle level is the one who make the daily operational decisions. Okay, who will get leave it. and this is kind of long term decisions or strategic decision is what we call it as at the top management typically makes. Okay. So, I will give you a simple example how this works. So, let us say there is a big super store, okay, a very big super store some of you may know about this and let us say this is like 200 meters long and 100 meters wide, okay. so it is a big big super store let us assume it this way. And here is the child section, and here is the alcohol section. Okay, just to make sure that the children doesn't go to alcohol and don't drink or something like that. So this one is this store keeps uh, electronic data of all sales. Okay, across the country. Okay. So, you have all electronic data, every sale data is logged. Okay. Then you let us say analyze the sales data, you are analyzing the sales data and found, what did you found? You find that the people who tend to buy diapers in the afternoon also tend to buy beer. So, maybe they get tired by changing the kids diaper we do not know. So, when you found that the people who buy diapers in the afternoon kid diapers in the afternoon also tend to buy beer that is the information you have. Okay. This you did not know earlier. So, then it does not make sense to keep them this far. You may want to move them to the same level something like this. Okay. Okay. Move it right here so that this distance is reduced. Okay. Even though it's separated a little bit, but the people can fetch alcohol far quickly. Okay. Now once you have this, this is this movement of alcohol section from this extreme corner to nearby the kid section is an operation decision made by the store manager. And once a decision is made, is the decision good or bad? How do you know? Okay. Then you do is you collect more sales data after relocating and see whether sales increased. If the sales have increased after you moved the alcohol department from one corner to that price, then actually would make sense to you. Uh, that okay, fine. This was a good decision. Uh, more people are buying beer or vice versa, whatever it is. It improves the sales and you get more money out of it. So, as from the daily operational aspect to make profit, it is a good and wise business decision. Okay. So, I hope now you clearly have an idea of how the EDP, the electronic data processing or the transaction processing system, has evolved from uh, just storing data or making things paperless to an MIS which is an information processing system um, which was the precursor of decision support system. So, for the time being we will take a small break here uh, and what we will do is we will uh, come back with the uh, next information of how the MIS has evolved into a 
uh, DSS system. Thank you.